that head right. That's a little door in there. My brother in law. I haven't met him yet. I'm going to meet him in two weeks. His name's Neil.
said we're not getting off page four until y'all read chapter nine so y'all need to get busy he said he's waiting on y'all Somebody go knock on knock on Joe's door and tell him we're having class. Old Thank you, Lord. Thank you, my brother. You need another book? Well, I was looking for mine. What? It's around here somewhere, I'm sure. We're going to find it. I'm going to ask uh, I'll ask Nate if he's seen it Dave Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this awesome time in your presence, Lord. We thank you for your word. 
We thank you for your promises that are all yes and amen. Lord, and we just thank you for the voice that you've given us that we can that we can shout and we can praise. Lord, that we can once we submit our petitions to you, our praise is an expression of our faith. And we just give you praise today and we say thank you. Thank you for everything that you've done. Thank you for saying that it's finished. That you did the work, Lord, that you did. We stand before you today as sons. We stand before you today as whole. We stand before you today in perfect peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken operating inside of your perfect love that casts out every fear. Lord, and we thank you that your faith functions and operates and works by your love. And we just say thank you. We bless you. You said that we would hear your voice and we would know your voice. So we thank you today that we can not only hear your voice, but we can know your voice. And the voice of the stranger we will not listen to. And we thank you for leading us this morning. We thank you for leading us into paths of righteousness for your name's sake. We thank you for leading us by the still waters. We thank you for restoring our soul. We thank you for healing. The word says, by your stripes we were healed. And I just release healing right now in this place. The word of God says, by his stripes we're healed. So by faith we can receive that. So if anybody in here has any sickness, anything going on in the body, anything going on in the emotions... God's releasing faith right now. The Spirit of God is releasing faith to take hold of healing for yourself. Maybe you're standing in the gap for someone. There's no distance in the spirit realm. We can release a word by faith and it can go out. The Bible says that God sent His word and healed them and delivered them of all their destructions. So, Father, we release the word right now. We release the word over those that have asked us for prayer for healing. And we say that your word is going to go out and it's going to accomplish that thing. Whatever you send it out to do, it's going to accomplish that thing and it's not going to return void. And we just say thank you. The Bible says once we offer up our prayers to give thanks... And that your peace that surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and minds. So Lord, we just thank you for peace right now over that situation. Whatever that situation is, we thank you that it's already done. And we're going to walk in in peace. And we're going to sing a hallelujah as a demonstration of our faith. Lord, we love you. We honor you. We glorify you. We bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, my brother. Hey, brother. Mm. Hey. What's up, man? We were praying. Every day. A little, Woo! A little bit further. Yeah. A little bit more studying at night. You ain't ever late for work. I'm not late. Either. Page four, we're about to get off page four, guys. No. We're going to do it. So, uh, Jesse, what's up, my brother? Going, Good brother? to see you. Still shining. Yes, Keep shining, man. Keep shining. The joy that we have, the peace that we have, the love that we have. We need that joy. That's our strength. The Lord gave that to us. The world didn't give it to us, and the world can't take it away. Amen? Amen. It's going to try to. Every day. Every day. You've got to, 
I was telling Jesse yesterday, you see a lot of the guys come from the center and, and, and they're on fire, but we've seen some fall away. Right? We've seen some fall away. You got to maintain that. You guys got to maintain that. All you guys that are here, you're contending for that faith, and we're looking at that. There were some people that came in to the early church and said they were sensual, right? That means they operated according to their feelings. They operated outside of faith, flesh. in the flesh. And, and, and listen, the devil don't come in a red suit and a pitchfork. Y'all know that, right? Sometimes he might even come. Sometimes he might even come disguised as a coworker. Somebody you're working beside. I know none of you guys. Not talking about any of you got other companies, right? And, and they might begin to gossip. Well, the boss needs to do this, or if this other guy was doing this, or you got to shut that down. <laughs> That's got to. We got to speak life. We got to speak faith, because the Bible says. In 1 Corinthians 11, it says, God had told the children of Israel, He says, I've got a place promised for you. It's a, it's a land flowing with milk and honey. It's got everything that you need. How many people has God said that to? Jeremiah 29. He said that to the church. i got a future for you. I have a plan for you. And it's a plan of hope. And it's a plan that's going to give you an expected end. It's not of evil. And that's what God told the children of Israel. And guess what happened? 1 Corinthians 11 says an entire generation died in the wilderness on their way to the promise because they murmured and complained. It seems like it's innocent, but it's got to... You shut it. You shut it. I, I remember when the Lord really started dealing with me on this probably about... probably around 2007-ish, really started ministering to my heart. And there were some relationships that I just cut off because people just couldn't shut up, honestly. And I was just like, I couldn't be around it. I talked to them and I said, like, look, if you want to complain, that's on you, but just please don't do it around me. And they just kept doing it and kept doing it. And I was like, I love you, but I got to, the Lord's got me in a season right now and He's trying to take me somewhere that I want to go and I'm not going to allow anything to stop it. You know, and uh, that's a decision that we have to make. You know, the Bible tells us to guard our hearts. It says above all else to so what? Proverbs 4, it says to guard our hearts, for out of it flow the issues of life. How do we guard our hearts? Things we watch, things we listen to, things we say. That's how we guard our hearts. The people we surround ourselves. Amen. Amen. Who is speaking into our lives? Go ahead, brother. So... Just to, you know, touch on for a second stuff. Because I've always been someone who listens to people. Like, sometimes people just need someone to listen to. Like, you know, like, you got someone who's going to vent. How do, how do you deal with that? Like, not, man, you know, complaining about someone's day, but, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just got so much weighing on you that you have to tell somebody. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I know we're supposed to take it to God, but sometimes it's, it's best to, to let somebody out. Well, there's a proverb that says, and, and I'm not, I'm going to go, I'm going to go a little bit deeper into this, but there's a proverb that actually says that a fool vents his frustrations, but a wise man holds them back. I'll tell you what happens, real life story, ready? I come into pastor and I start venting to pastor, this happens, and he gives me the Paddington Bear stare. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? So I'm in there, I'm just like, man, this and this and blah blah, boom boom. And then Pastor just Pastor just listens to me and gives me the Paddington Bear stare until it makes me really uncomfortable. <laughs> and then I stop talking and I realize what I'm doing. Oh, I'm doing that. And then he covenant exchanges me. And whatever negative thing I was saying, he comes back and hits me with the one-two positive combo about, why don't you look at it this way? So, 
that's something we could do. If somebody vent, so we could listen to them and let them get that out. But let's say somebody's complaining about their girlfriend. It's backfired. You know what I mean? And then they're complaining. The world would say, kick her to the curb, bud. There's more fish in the sea. You know, so you have an opportunity to speak life or death over this person. You might be able to say, well, bud, maybe it's not a good idea to have a girlfriend right now in your life. You know, you're in transition or you're doing this or maybe you got a little growing up to do or, you know, hit them with some positive reinforcement and let them see in love, not in judgment, their mistake and then give them what the word says. And that's what being light looks like. Hey, look, you've done this this way. You've got yourself in a pickle. Here's the word of God. This is what it says. You know what I mean? So as long as you're now one or two or three times of you saying, hey, I don't really think like that, and you hit them with that, and they keep coming at you, that's what Pastor's saying is, hey, man, I don't want to hear that no more. I don't hear that. Yeah. And you see, lately, we had a couple guys that we really were long-suffering with for a long time. We loved them. And they left. Because we were like, hey, we love you. You're a great, you're a hard worker, but you won't shut that gas cap. And and you're you're working and you're bringing down the whole job with your negativity, right? And you gotta be. So that that happens. There and is there anything judgmental about that? No, because a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Sometimes you just gotta say, man, you gotta go, man. You know, and sometimes it takes them going to thinking the grass is greener on the other side. And you know what happens with most of those people? They come back. Because they go, man, you, it really, if I thought it sucked here, it, it was horrible over there. And like, you know what I'm saying? So sometimes this whole thing is a process. I mean, even with me, I go to pastor, I'm like, pastor, blah, blah, blah. The pastor, man, he, he doesn't get on to me. He doesn't make me feel any kind of way. He just gives me that patted and I start to sweat under my armpit a little bit. <laughs> he just looks at me and smiles. And I can literally hear what he's thinking. Shut that gas there. <laughs> right? Scripture also says, cast your cares on the Lord, for he cares for you. Yeah. And so when we have troubles like that, we need to take those to the Lord. And it also says, don't accuse a servant to his master. So when I'm ever praying, if Dave is like, got me in a bind, I don't go to God and go, Dave sucks, God. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't, don't accuse a servant to his master. I, God doesn't want to hear all, because judge not least you be judged. Anytime you go to God and you start talking about somebody else, man, I don't know about you, but the Lord starts opening up my eyes to see my mess. And I'm like, oh God, forgive me. What's the, I don't want, I don't want to go there. Back right off. Yeah. So if I'm praying for something, if I'm praying, and I find myself doing that sometimes, I'll be talking about somebody, thinking about somebody. I'll be angry with somebody, and I'll just say, okay. And then I'll start to pray for them because I know that that's what God wants me to do, right? In a positive way, God. Bless them, please. Yeah. Open up the eyes of their understanding in Jesus' name, yeah. please. We've talked about that a lot too. Um, if you play, if you pray out of a place of frustration or strife, then it's a it's a runway for the enemy to come in. Because yeah. it says where there's envy and strife, there's what confusion and every evil work. So if I'm praying for me to have a better day. <laughs> because of this, in, because of Dave or whoever, then it's all self-seeking. I'm concerned about myself, you know. But if I switch that and I pray from a posture of love, because I want to see my brother walk in the best that God has for him and discover the plan that God has for him and understand that he's a son, or understand whoever it is, it might be a girl, understand that she's a daughter. Then you'll see God begin to move. But if you're playing, praying out of self-seeking, if you're praying out of strife, darkness is going to flood in. Evil and confusion. 
And I think it's important that we we focus on positive. Amen. And not allow the enemy to hit us with offense all the time because that's the way he baits us out. Yes. I know. Yes. The spirit's life and peace. If he can bait us out of that and get us all mad, then we're all up in the flesh. Yeah. Amen. The book of James talks about confessing your faults to one another. If you go back and you study that out, it's talking about the prayer of faith. Right? Romans 14 says anything outside of faith is sin. So there's times when we miss it and we get out of faith. I mean, I've been there. You go to your brother, Josh was saying, you begin to talk, and next thing you know, that's why you want to, in a multitude of counsel, there's safety. You don't want to just talk to anybody, Jesse. You want to talk to people that have been doing this thing for a while that are going to what? Encourage you and build you up. They're going to have a word for you. But now you've got to be, you got to be ready to receive it. Amen. And sometimes we just want, a lot of people just want to be in that wound licking club and all they want to do is complain and gossip and, man, that don't do anything. That just, that just keeps that, it's like a licking a, a wound and just keeps it open. Keeps it open, keeps it open, keeps it open. Man, you've got to release faith. The Word says this, yeah, but, yeah, buts are devils. I want to know what the Word says. What does the Word say about that situation? Yeah, but, uh, no, this is how I feel, or this is what my mama told me, or what my, my pastor told me. I'm sorry, if it doesn't line up with the Word, it's not true. The Bible says that the shield of faith quenches all the fiery darts of the enemy. This faith has to be based upon what? What the Word says. Yeah. Do you think, like, I see this note here, like we're praying, we're praying in the Holy Spirit. So, you know, we've, we've read this Word, and you hear people say, oh, I've read the Word, I've read the Word, but you don't see that person doing the Word, you know what I mean? Or in my life, like I've read the word in certain areas, like I get it and I'm doing and operating in that, but certain areas I'm not. Maybe 80% of the time, but sometimes when the pressure comes or the, the enemy or my own circumstance comes, I, I, I slip there. 20, but when I, pray, when I pray in the Holy Spirit, like the Holy Spirit is literally searching my heart. It's like, search my heart, oh God. And, and the Holy Spirit is literally taking the Word and then breaking down those strongholds mm -hmm. that I've set up. Yes. Those things in me that no matter, because you look at that like, I'm a man of God, I love the Lord, I have good fruit, people see my fruit, yet there's some things in the junk in the trunk that cause me to act in sin. Like, I, there's sin in there. Mm. And I believe that the Holy Spirit is what breaks down the walls of sin shines its light into the deepest part, those things that are hidden, those hidden things, Amen. those events in your life that took place and happened and you were, you were greatly wounded or greatly offended, then the enemy puppets you and triggers you in mm -hmm. those areas because mm -hmm. he knows you're holding that in your heart. And I believe that the Holy Spirit literally takes the Word of God into that place and tears down Amen. those strongholds. So praying in the Spirit, win-win, once again, win-win. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and something's happening in there that it seems like with my own discipline I can never do. Yeah. Mm. Amen. Well, we see, you know, we've been looking at we've been looking at Jude, the book of Jude, how people came in and and Jude came in against the early church and Jude told them to contend for the faith that was originally released, and then he ends, the book of Jude ends with, and you beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit keeping yourselves in the love of God. So praying in the Holy Spirit is going to build you up on that faith. And it's going to, like Josh has said, yes, it's going to keep you in the love. And it's going to begin to point out those things, of those, those pieces of unbelief or tradition or offense or whatever those hurts are from the past. It's going to begin to illuminate that and reveal it to us. And it's going to begin to tear those things down as we allow it to. And we're going to begin to take the Word of God. We're going to begin to take the unbelief. We're going to begin to take the tradition. The walls are going to be torn down. And Holy Spirit is going to replace it with His Word. With the Word of God. With revelation.
Jesus says, I'm building my church. We're, we're the church. Amen? We are the church. It's not four walls. He says, I'm building my church on revelation and the gates of hell shall not prevail. What, what is that? It's, he's taking the mind of Christ, which we have, and He's revealing it to our spirit. And as we get that Word, it's building us up. That's what we're looking at today. It's building us up above our feelings. It's building us up above the sense realm. It's building us up, up above all the things that we've had in our past, all the hurts. And it's, it's bringing us into a place of walking the Spirit where we get outside of our feelings, right? We get above our feelings. We get above the flesh. And we're no, long, no longer sense-ruled, but we're faith-ruled. Right? And that's why it's so important that we get in there every day and we spend that time in prayer. We spend that time in intimacy and allow Him to work. Allow the Holy Spirit to go to work. Allow Him to just go to work. And like I said, we got to be willing to what? Receive correction. Not just from an individual, but from God. Because when we spend time in prayer, I promise you, there's going to be some things that we're going to see in our life, that's got to go. And if it doesn't, we're going to be just like the children of Israel. And we're going to just be, the promised land's right there for your healing. But, yeah. Yeah. But I don't believe in healing. Okay. And you can sit there with that sickness and, and whatever you got, and you can just keep wandering around. Wandering around. And God says, by my stripes, you're healed. Well, my pastor told me that healing wasn't for today. Or I prayed and I didn't see it. So um, yeah, it's not, yeah. So we looked at that on Thursday. We talked about how the fig tree. So it said the fig tree. Jesus spoke to the fig tree. And then later on, the fig tree died. And it said the fig tree dried up by what? The roots. The roots. That means there might have still been some leaves on that tree for a day or two. You get what I'm saying? You prayed for your healing... And the symptoms were still there, but God's dealing with the root of the matter. So what do we do? Faith calls things that be not as though they were. Jesus said, He told Thomas, He says, you see and believe. You feel and believe. You see the holes. You feel them with your hands. But blessed are those who haven't seen and believe. You know who he was talking about? Us. Us. Because we can't see Him. We didn't actually see Him on the cross, but we have faith. We didn't actually see Him. We can't actually see Him with our physical eyes sitting in heavenly places, the resurrected Jesus, but we believe by faith that it's already done. And Jesus says, blessed are those who believe that haven't seen Right? We didn't actually see Him go to the whipping post, but the Word of God says that He went and He received 39 stripes, and by those stripes we're healed. So by faith, faith says, it's already done, and I'll receive it. I remember a few, uh, as being a, like a baby Christian, maybe like 10 years, I got saved about 10 years ago, and uh, I, I used, somebody used to tell me, they said, you know, if you have a problem with believing or, or, or anything, he said, just pray to, the, pray to God to make himself uh, show, you know, real to you or show himself to you. Yeah. Like, and I, I've heard that a couple times, and I would be like, you know, and I was just struggling with it. And, uh, man, I, I, I would sincerely pray that prayer. And then, like, you know, now looking back, like, it just blew my mind. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, he would do something, like, that would be you know unearthly like impossible Miraculous. yeah almost you know what I mean like yeah, yeah. like like in your heart you know that where it came from that's right you know? mm. so it was yeah. it so was pretty powerful look look at the Israelites ready so for forty years they wandered in the wilderness right they were God's people it says their clothes never wore out their sandals never wore out mm. right. Every day, manna, quail, water, like in the desert. So wait a minute. 
They were still God's people. He still fed them. He still clothed them. He still dealt with them. He still took care of them. But they just didn't enter into his promise. Right. His full purpose for their life. Exactly. The land of milk and honey. And so we see that in areas of our life too. God still loves us. Oh, he woke me up, put breath in my lungs. Yeah, he did. Amen. You know, thumbs up. Right? But he has so much more for you. And he's not a respecter of persons. What's keeping you from there? You're murmuring and complaining. You're unbelief. Amen. You know, and, and it, you may be killing it here, but here, like sometimes I, I say that, like I struggle in a certain area, and I'm like, God, I'm killing it everywhere else, but why not here? It's my unbelief. It's my and and how do you? What's a sign of unbelief? Murmuring and complaining, mm-hmm. right? So if we want to get practical in here, if you're murmuring and complaining about something, you're in unbelief. You're not operating in faith. From the abundance and, of the heart, the mouth speaks. The spouse speaks, and the you, how do you build up your faith? Praying Praying in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. It seems like we keep getting back to that. Amen. It's it's big. Yeah. It's big. Yeah. It's God's. We only want to do things according to God's will, because there's a way that seems right to man, but it leads to death. God's will is always going to lead us to life, and life more abundantly. If I decide that I don't want to do that because, fill in the blank, then I just, you know, God will still, He still loves me, and but I, like Josh said, I will not step into the perfect will of God, and I won't be able to prove the perfect will of God. It won't be demonstrated in and through my life. Right? Read, um, let's do... Let's start with Mark eleven twenty two and go down through twenty five. Let me get out of the TPT and dig it. Brother Hagen was asked a question one time. Kenneth e. Hagen. He was they 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 wrote him off as dead, right? We talked about this the other day. He had an incurable blood disease. He had some situations with his heart. He was supposed to die according to the doctors. But he got the Word of God and he grabbed a hold of these verses right here and received it. And he began to speak to the situation, not about the situation. Murmuring and complaining is what? Speaking about the situation. But he began to speak to the situation. And like I said, he went on to live in his 80s. He had a long, fruitful life. He had a powerful ministry. He, 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 he has an international ministry. He's got a Bible, Rhema Bible Institute all over the world. And it started with a man who was determined to stand on God's Word no matter what. So somebody asked him, they said, how long are you going to preach on Mark 11? And sometimes y'all ask me, how long are, y'all, how long are you going to stay on page 4? How long are you going to stay on this? Till we all get it. Till you get it. <laughs> Till we all come into unity of faith. What good would it be for me to take off running and leave a bunch of guys behind if they're not running next to me? That would be all about me. (laughs) There were people who, if you go back and you read, when they entered into the promised land, there were people who went back and helped people that didn't make it as Joshua went in, as he... During the time when he went in, there were people who went back and got those who had it made, made it in, and they were very patient with them, and they helped them usher them into the promised land. And that's what God desires. He wants for all of us to enter into His best. He doesn't want to leave anybody behind. Amen? Okay, Josh. 22 to 24? Yeah, 25. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. And whatever, and whenever you stand praying, 
If you have anything against anyone, forgive him that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. Amen. So let's look at our let's look at our paper. Because I really want to get off page four today. Eleven twenty three. Go down to G. Doubt and unbelief. If you read this passage, you'll see that doubt and unbelief are the things that keep us from receiving what we pray for and what we say. So we're learning something today that will, we read in Jude, we're, we're learning something today that can build us up above those areas of doubt and unbelief. I want to encourage y'all, go back and read, read the book, man. Start with page uh, chapter 5 and go through chapter 9. There's a lot of good information in there that will change your life. Like literally, change your life. So chapter 9 is dealing with edification, and that's what we're talking about right now. So praying in the Spirit deals with doubt and unbelief. The anointing, when we begin to pray in the Spirit, an anointing is released. Jesus said it like this. He says, out of our bellies will flow what? Rivers, Rivers of living water. In other words, the power of God will begin to function and operate and flow out of our life. I think Dave gave this illustration one time and it was really good. He was talking about at the mouth of a fountain. What did you say? You can't stick anything in because the outflow keeps anything dirty from coming in. You to, when I was a kid, I used to try to stick little sticks and stuff up in the spigot. Wait, wash it right out again, you know. Hmm. And that's the way that outflow is. It, it, it keeps the garbage out. The garbage out. Mm. It keeps mm. it clean. It's so good. The dead sea. There's no flow. Everything's dead. Amen. Amen. All right. Verse 22. It says, have faith in God. Another way you could say that, another way that it's uh, translated is have the God kind of faith. And we know, we've talked about in Genesis 1 what the God kind of faith looks like. I also want to look at Romans 4 quickly. Romans 4. I want to go back and look at the father of faith, Abraham. Uh, let's go 13 to 20. Or, I'm sorry, uh, 22. 13 to 22. Romans 4, 13 to 22. It says, For the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if those who are of the law are heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of no effect, because the law brings about wrath. For where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations, in the presence of him who he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as those... As though, as though they did, who contrary to hope and hope believed, so that he might become the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Hmm. And being fully convinced that he had what he had promised, he was also able to perform, and therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness. Amen. Amen. So imagine this: you get a word. Here's Abraham. He gets a word at the age seventy-five that God is going to make him a father of many nations. Now, remember, keep in mind. At 75, he, had, he didn't have any children. His wife, Sarah, her womb was barren. So in the natural, all odds were stacked against him. Yeah, Amen. It didn't look good. Yeah. 
It was not looking good at all. And his name was Abram. Now watch this. One of the reasons why God, the Bible says, one of the reasons why God was able to use him, it says that he was willing to raise up sons and kings. So that was something that was in his heart, a commitment that he had in his heart, was I'm going to raise up kings to come in that are going to continue to bring in your kingdom. I'm going to raise up sons. So he comes out, and God, eventually, God changes his name. His name, the name Abram means exalted father. Another word we could use for that would be could be pride. Right? Because to exalt means. So we could say pride. And we know pride comes before destruction, but God called him out of Babylon, which is basically for us, you could say the world calls him out, and then took him on a little journey. And we know it was a little rocky there. Amen? But if you look at it through the lens of the blood, God doesn't remember any of those mistakes that He made, and He doesn't bring it up over in Romans. I think that's pretty cool. That's another sermon. But God changes His name from Abram to Abraham. There's a little, there's two letters that were added in there. There's an H and an A. And it's Hasid. And it's covenant. It means covenant. And it's God's name. And God put his name, he placed his name. Placed his name, the H and the A, right in the middle of Abram. And then he added the Ham. So it was showing that he joined covenant with him. And the name Abraham literally means a father of many nations. So the God kind of faith is God calls things that be not as though they were. Yes, Abram was didn't have any children yet. Yes, his wife was barren. But God says, I see this man. I could use him. He's coming out of the world. He's going to raise up kings. I can use this man. And I'm going to change his name from exalted father. And I'm going to speak life into him. And I'm going to call something that's not as though it was. And maybe God said, spoken something like that to some of you guys. Maybe one time everything was dead in your life. Maybe one time you lost everything. But because of your obedience, because you made a decision to come out of the world... You made a decision to come out of darkness and come into the light. God's saying, man, I could use this guy. And he's speaking life. And Abraham continued to believe. It says he was fully persuaded that God was going to do what he said he was going to do. And therefore, it says it was accounted unto him for righteousness. And then eventually he became what? The father of many nations. But I bet it looked really crazy when his wife was calling him Abraham because every time she said Abraham, he, she was saying father of many nations, but he didn't have any kids. It's just like sometimes when we pray, we might have people who aren't real familiar with faith and they might say, why are you saying you're healed when you're still coughing or you're still sneezing or your back's still hurting? Because God said by His stripes, I am healed. Why are you saying that your God shall supply all your needs when your bank account's not looking real good? Hello, we've all been there. But then He always comes through. And guess what? There's always a transition period into the next season. And in that transition period, there's there's a season of testing. And I'm not saying God's putting poverty on you and sickness on you and all that. That's not how we test you. The testing is when all the odds seem to be stacked against you and He speaks something over your life, the test is, are you going to take that word and receive it? And say the same thing. And say it? Because the God kind of faith calls things that be not as though they were. He says we can speak to the mountain and the mountain will be removed. It doesn't say anything about speaking about that mountain. Oh, I'm so broke. 
I never had money. I'm never going to have money. My daddy was broke. My granddaddy was broke. We're never going to have money. We're always going to be broke. Guess what? You're always going to be broke. You know what puts the end to generational curses? This right here. And this right here. Believing with your heart. Speaking with your mouth. Yeah. It says that He'll supply all our needs according to His riches and glory. Yeah. And we're always focused on what's in our pocket. Instead of uh -huh. His and, uh, need to be mind needs resource. to be renewed. Amen. And that, and that is accelerated by the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Is that good? Mind renewal. If you want more, give more away. That's right. Yeah. Anytime I'm yeah, looking yeah. like I'm going to be shy... I look for opportunities. <laughs> Open handed. <laughs> Open handed. The only way you can that's receive. A hard one to learn right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Love you guys. <laughs>